So we're here at Computex at uh, Rovi. And uh, Rovi acquired Divix, right? Uh, Rovi acquired Sonic Solutions, um, which had acquired Divix previously. So yes, Divix so, is now a part of, of Rovi. So why did Rovi buy uh, Sonic Solutions and Divix? Well, one of the most exciting technologies that we developed is called Divix Plus Streaming. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, the need for um, advanced features and seamless, uh, smooth streaming to all these different connected devices that are in the market today is of you know, interest to a lot of the over-the-top providers, service providers, operators, and whatnot. So is this on the market, or is it still a demo, or what is this? So this, this is, what we're looking at is a demonstration yeah. here, um, but Divix Plus Streaming is launched. Uh, it is supported on uh, several different uh, SOCs uh, on the marketplace today. And we announced a service uh, in Europe uh, with Dixons already. But um, kind of the key benefits here uh, with Divix Plus Streaming, what makes it so exciting, is that it's adaptive, secure bitrate streaming. So as the network bandwidth adjusts, we actually adjust the levels that go you know, down from a lower resolution all the way up to full 1080p so that you, the, the user always has a seamless playback experience. Is that something that doesn't exist otherwise? No, secure adaptive streaming does exist, that concept. What we do, is, which is a little bit different, is we take and extend um, the Blu-ray and DVD-like features of subtitles, audio tracks, you know, chapter points, smooth fast forward and rewind, which I'll show you here in a minute, which kind of gives the consumer what they're used to in a physical media, but in digital media. So is that part of the encoder? Uh, app that anybody can encode DivX to do that, or is it only very special, only for providers of video on demand and stuff like that? No, we. I mean, we have solutions that broadcasters, that that you know, consumers can provide um, through our main concept, Total Code Solutions, that can actually go and convert uh, any of their content into DivX and DivX Plus streaming. And it's going to be compatible with any bitrate. Or how, how many? How how, how big I mean, a range can you support? I mean, it, we could we could do a custom solution, I suppose, but our standard is uh, about 11 or so different files that kind of range, um, I think, all the way down from maybe something like um, sub VGA all the way up to 1080p. But also, what we do is we change uh, bitrate as well as resolution. So not all adaptive solutions do that. So let me just walk you through the demo so you can get a seat. So this is a this is a storefront. It's your kind of UI a, or is yep, it custom UI? This is just UI kind of a, a, what we call our native. So it's our brand logo. So it's kind of any yeah. logo here. Is so, that part of your package? To do yes, the it's, part of, it's part of our Rovi Entertainment Store yeah. package. Um, so we're going to resume play from yeah. before, and this is loading the movie directly. So this is actually running on a, a, a Broadcom a chip uh, yeah. that, that can be played back on Blu-ray yeah. uh, or, or TV. Um, so this is this is actually implemented at the chip level today. So this is a prototype. Of, no, it's just a, a reference design reference that can design. go directly into the chip. So this is you know essentially pre-production. And that's right? MIPS based, no? Is that uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. A BCM. The chip. Is it MIPS arm? Okay. Oh, this one. Okay. So I mean, essentially, this imagine this being integrated and in here. So what we've done here, as you can see. The different levels that we have. This yeah. is this is not uh, going to be on the, the actual uh, device. This is just for a demonstration, so you can see the frame count in the corner, yeah. and then you can also then see the resolution, the frame rate, um, the ratio, the fixed ratio, and then we have zero to nine levels. Okay. This is the adaptive streaming, right? So level nine is the highest, full 1080p. So you're get, you're seeing full HD here right now. Now, if it scales down actually lower, you'll see the levels drop. Okay. It might still be. Uh, it might still be. Uh, what are you doing here, for example? Is that connected? No, we are, we are ch changing the bandwidth. The the right. Is that the server, or what is that? Yeah, this is the server. The, this, this device plays in the content on this server. You can see here down down to uh, 5000 PPS. Okay, down the screen. Yeah. So we're, so we're simulating a, a, a congested network environment, so you can see. Now it switches. Now it just went up to 720 level five. Right. But you don't see buffering. You don't see different. No right? There's no. There's no stopping. The the audio does not stop. Never. Right? No. This is this is what is designed for Divix Plus, right? To have this user experience that the user can actually can tolerate a degradation in video quality if the network is bad. They're not going to tolerate if the audio stops. They're not going to tolerate if the video stops playing. So. We're showcasing this today in uh, Broadcom Reference Design and, and on the CE devices, but we also have uh, support for Android, for tablets and smartphones, um, as well as iOS. So here's an Android. And this is uh, Android Samsung tablet. 
also uh, it's also playback the content, the content file on this from the server. server. Yeah. Same server. This is local through the router here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because we're si that's why we're simulating the, the bandwidth, the network congestion. So how many users use this today? Right. Like how many consumers have this? Are watching TV plus streaming today. Right. So. This is a very new technology that we just launched, so the services have not yet come live, uh, but they're in process right now, and we're actively discussing uh, content services across the world uh, to be powered by DivX Plus streaming, so coming soon. So this is H.264 codec in DivX, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, and the audio could be any GTS or... Well, we use AAC. AAC, AAC. AAC. Yeah, mandatory, but we uh, optional support other, like, uh, like, like IC3 yeah, and the TTS, yeah. yeah. So what version of DivX is that? So this is a, this is associated to DivX Plus HD. So typically on the device side, if you look into the marketplace today, there's DivX Plus HD certified devices, which are meant for the download to own kind of offline use case. Um, this is just building on top of that. So it's essentially an extension of DivX Plus HD certification. Which is which version? So this is 1080p. Um, uh, but the, is it a number? Divix. No, it's not. It's not associated no to any. Really. No, the numbers kind of went away. Yeah. That was more along the PC software. Yeah. Um, so we also just announced, uh, or announcing at the show today, that M Star, local Chinese vendor, yeah. actually has announced support for Divix Plus streaming uh, on their chipset for CE manufacturers. So huge push. This is what where is we are in the marketplace. What CPU is that? Yeah. M Star. What? Yeah, what Morningstar. Morningstar. Uh, yeah, that MIPS. Arm. Uh, it, it is a, a chipset manufacturer uh, yeah. in Taiwan. Oh, yeah, the biggest. Is it ARM or MIPS or? Yes, I'm both, both architecture, both on ARM and the MIPS. So this totally works on ARM, right? On, but only on specific chips that support it, or well, only I mean, think that. So if, if you if you think about the history of, of DivX and what we've done in the marketplace, we specialized in putting our packages together in a very embedded. SDK for development and to low cost all the way up to high end SOCs. So that's all we're doing with DivX Plus Streaming is then packaging it in a way that can be consumed and integrated at the chip level so that it's easier once the OEMs have to deploy. So that's where we are in the, in the stage of deployment. We have some services that are coming online, but the chip vendors are starting to actually integrate this natively into the chip so that it's very easy to then spread widely. So is it better than YouTube? I think it's a little bit different than different? what YouTube is uh, trying to do. I mean, DivX and DivX Plus streaming is primarily focused right now on you know premium content services, content protection, getting consumers used to um, paying for their content and then distributing that across any device. But could YouTube use this? Yeah, of course. Anybody exactly. with the service could use this. To improve their whole uh, qualities and uh, system. If they wanted, they could just call you and sure. use it. Yeah, give my card. Right, and uh, do you need do you do anything special with the cloud or with the server systems and stuff like that to be well, able to host so much video? Is well, there we any don't. We're, for that? We we have several different models of how we can support this, right? So, our primary model typically is not even hosting. We we'll, we integrate this into the back end of the existing service provider service. So you just need a big server and put it up. I mean, it's probably a few more steps than that, but you know, we're, again, we're not really focused on trying to be the one that's hosting everything. But this technology can be integrated into all the existing service and OTT services that are out there, as well as mobile operators, you know, cable operators, anybody that's operating a VOD or OTT service. So, what's the next DivX going to be? Uh, do you have a future codec, or do you have something you, you can talk about? Or no, I mean, for right now, this is really this is this is what's the latest the next, and greatest. Yeah. This is still H.264, right? How about um, VP? What's it called VP eight? Uh, is that the open codec stuff? Uh, is DivX compatible or? I think you maybe maybe not. Lost my uh, yeah my range right. of discussion. Uh, okay. Does it support uh, peer to peer? Can it work with that somehow? I mean, you know, all we're, we're a transport protocol, right? I yeah. mean, we're we're a file format to actually get you know content across different mm -hmm. devices. So. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks.